just repeating the whole scenario in just five minutes it will get repeated in your mind and you and it will get recorded too okay so so actually today's our, our today's topic was the lymphatic drainage association that how the areas of the bodies are drained into the lymph node regions and how are they important or significant regarding different pathologies the main purpose of the lymph node drainage is that lymph from the one area of the body get drained to the uh, another lymph node and then that lymph will be spread towards all over the body so any kind of disease any kind of pathology that is occurring in a specific area or suppose that is occurring in the thorax region and that is draining that is that is draining towards a lymph node which is named x for suppose that is named named x from that x lymph node to, towards the all over body the cancer cells or the pathological cells or the pathological uh, 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 antigens will be forwarded will be spreaded towards the whole body starting from the submandibular and submental region these are the areas which receive their lymph from the oral cavity anterior tongue and lower lip and the associated pathologies which could be uh, spread via these from uh, which could be taken from these areas and could be spread towards the whole body via these lymph nodes are the malignancy of and metastasis to the oral cavity that means malignancy that is arising from the oral cavity or any kind of malignancy that is that is being received by the oral cavity okay all these these kind of pathologies are associated with the submandibular and submandibular submental region because these are actually just present in uh, in your neck or just present uh, below your tongue okay that's why the oral cavity is important in regards to that then are the deep cervical lymph node actually these both kinds of lymph nodes are the cervical lymph nodes but then comes the deep cervical lymph node which drain there which are being drained by the head neck and oropharynx and the special or the associated pathologies regarding that are the upper respiratory tract infection infectious mononucleus is ebv and then comes the kawasaki disease and then comes the malignancy of head neck and oropharynx then are the uh, super supraclavicular lymph nodes these are actually bilateral means present on both sides one are the on the left side one are on the right side these are on the right side these are on the this is the left side of the patient for suppose the left side the supraclavicular lymph node of the left side is called as the virco node i hope it is uh, just named after the scientist which discovered it who discovered it is the virco is the name of scientist that's that's why he named it as the virco node on the right side the right hemithorax is being drained by the right supraclavicular node and the left side of the hemithorax abdomen and the pelvis region means this from this to this region all are being drained by this supraclavicular lymph node okay malignancies of thorax malignancies of abdomen malignancies of pelvis because all these three areas are being drained by these supraclavicular lymph nodes that's why the malignancies of these areas will affect or will spread via this lymph node or will eventually drain into this lymph node okay then comes the mediastinal lymph node which are actually the lymph nodes of the chest that's why trachea and esophagus is the area and then comes the hilar lymph node and hilar lymph nodes are actually present in the lungs which are present in both lungs and hilum is the area which is just the opening of the lungs for suppose let me draw it for suppose these are the lungs okay my drawing is so bad but for suppose these are the lungs so this is the hilum region which is the entrance region of the your lungs okay so here would be the hilar lymph nodes present then what are the diseases which should be related to these mediastinal and hilar lymph nodes or which should be drained by these two lymph nodes first one is the pulmonary tb since the pulmonary tb mycobacterium tuberculosis is the causative agent which affects one lung at one time okay which will affect the one lung that's why the hilar lymph nodes unilaterally will get enlarged in case of the pulmonary tb but the sarcoidosis is a systemic disease which is actually a autoimmune disease that's why both sides of lymph nodes bilateral hilar lymph nodes gets enlarged so this is one of the typical differentiating point in case of a bcq or mcq you have to remember that then are the then is the lung cancer and general lymphatic disease both these diseases are also being drained towards the mediastinal and the hilar lymph node okay then comes then which is the then comes the axillary lymph nodes for axillary lymph node because this is the most important lymph node this is in this lymph node upper limb breast and skin above the umbilicus all are being drained you have to just remember the breast and you have to remember the actress angelina julie because of the 
Barca 1 and Barca 2 gene present in the genome of Angelina Jolie. That's why and she had the family first relative familial history of the uh, breast cancer which was his her, her mother and her sister both were affected and both got mastectomy in her in their older ages that's why angelina julie got her mastectomy earlier than the uh, disease actually exacerbate or the disease actually worsened then these are the two mastitis which is the infection of the, the which is the infection of the breast and the metastasis especially of the breast cancer happens to happens or occurs towards the axillary lymph nodes that's why these uh, lymph nodes are most important ones then comes the epitrochlear lymph node which is just drained by the hand and forearm and the secondary syphilis is the disease which is uh, which is being spreaded or which is being spread toward these these lymph nodes then comes the celiac lymph node superior mesenteric lymph node and inferior mesenteric lymph nodes all these lymph nodes just belong to the gastrointestinal system you have to memorize the areas the celiac lymph node because it is named after the celiac trunk which is actually blood supply of the gastrointestinal system liver stomach spleen pancreas upper duodenum all are being drained by this celiac lymph node then comes the superior mesenteric lymph node which are which, uh, which are being drained by the areas just uh, when you are entering the lower duodenum then you are entering the small intestine you got your upper duodenum into celiac lymph node now you are getting your lower duodenum, jejunum and ileum and colon to splenic flexure area into the superior mesenteric lymph nodes and from colon to splenic flexure to upper rectum that means up to the anus you are getting uh, drained into the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes okay so what kind of pathologies what kind of the diseases will be get spread by uh, this these uh, lymph nodes Lymph mesenteric lymph lymphadenitis inflammatory bowel disease celiac disease celiac and inflammatory bowel disease these, these all are autoimmune diseases that are being drained by these lymph nodes the, that means if whenever these one of one of any these three diseases is, is has happened in, inside the body of a patient that means one of the lymph node area from these three will get enlarged okay you got my point then comes the actual thing which is the periumbilical region named after the sister mary joseph node okay so other name for periumbilical nodes or periumbilical lymph node are the sister mary joseph node node periumbilical are named because these are just around the umbilicus these receive lymph from the abdomen and pelvis you got my point for suppose you just your patient got gastric cancer okay gastric cancer means the ca cancer of the stomach okay so can cancer cells from the stomach in the lymph or from the interstitial tissue will travel toward the periumbilical lymph nodes then from periumbilical lymph nodes these will go further or these will spread toward the left supraclavicular node which is named as virco node now you get my point okay just tell me what did i tell you about periumbilical node or about gastric cancer how gastric cancer get spread to the different lymph nodes explain me Yeah, but first they are drained by or they are, are received by the periumbilical lymph nodes and then they, they go towards the supraclavicular lymph nodes, especially the left supraclavicular lymph node which is named as Virco node. So you just have to mem remember this, this point, gastric cancer, periumbilical lymph node, supraclavicular, left Virco node. Okay, okay. Then then comes the another important lymph node which is para aortic lymph node okay so you can you see that para is written in the uh, red color this para is written in red color this is written in red color because 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 the first aid writer the first aid uh, setter 
wants you to understand that where these pair of testes paraerotic these both sound kind of same pair 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 erotic or or paraerotic that means you have to remember that paraerotic are the lymph nodes which are around just around the aorta okay paraerotic means paraerotic means tell me around the aorta okay these are the lymph node which receives the lymph from the pair of testes from the pair of ovaries from the pair of kidneys from the pair of fallopian tube from the pair of fundus of uterus okay so all the kind of pairs you have to remember all the kind of pairs are being drained into the paraerotic pair paraerotic pair paraerotic pair para aortic okay aso aso yeah pair of testes pair of ovaries pair of kidneys pair of fallopian tube and fundus of uterus then yeah yeah i just wanted to convey you that this is a mnemonic okay mnemonic means a simple thing to be remembered okay okay then comes the meta then there comes the associated pathology which is metastasis any kind of cancer occurring in these areas will travel toward the paraerotic lymph nodes am i clear to you okay then comes the external iliac lymph node internal iliac lymph node external iliac lymph nodes are just present around this iliac region okay because aorta when the branches of aorta are called as the iliac uh, uh, internal iliac branch and external iliac branch okay around these around these uh, areas the lymph nodes present are called as the external iliac lymph node and internal iliac lymph node so body of uterus cervix and superior bladder all are being drained into the external iliac lymph nodes then comes the cervix proximal vagina corpus cavernosum prostate inferior bladder super, lower to lower rectum to anal canal above the pectinate line all are being drained into the internal iliac these all things are not that much important but you just have a view in your mind that where the internal iliac lymph nodes are present actually okay okay then comes the superficial inguinal lymph nodes these are important i will not tell you why these are important i i want answer from you why these are important okay these get drained from the distal vagina vulva scrotum urethra anal canal below the pectinate line skin below the umbilicus except the popliteal area now tell me why this inguinal the superficial inguinal lymph nodes are important in regards to usmle or in regards to an mcq yeah i will i will surely uh, give you that kind of scenario but i want you to see this blue line okay see this the testes the testes are being drained by paraerotic but the scrotum is being drained by superficial inguinal lymph node okay the covering around the testes is being drained by the superficial inguinal lymph nodes keep this thing in mind they will confuse you they will puzzle you they will try to uh, mes mesmerize with you this thing okay see the pair of testes are being drained by paraerotic lymph nodes but the covering around or skin around the uh, testes which is actually scrotum which is actually a pouch of the testes is being drained by this okay so oh, you, you you got my point right now just tell me just tell me why did i say you that these are important just uh, tell me hmm hmm Yes. Yeah, it is easy to get confused and teacher or any exam setter or any examiner will always puzzle you, will always confuse you with these two. I I am going to show you a scenario right now just after this topic. So 
what pathology what is associated pathology with all these all these three lymph nodes sexually transmitted infections okay sexually transmitted infections then comes the medial foot or leg cellulitis do you know what cellulitis is tell me is an infection widespread infection widespread infection of the skin okay widespread infection of the connective tissues or of the skin okay so the medial the cellulitis on the medial side of foot or leg is being drained by the superficial inguinal but cellulitis on the lateral side of the leg or foot is being drained by the popliteal yeah this is this is the this is this is the point this is the point where i want you to confuse actually okay so see this see this once again sexually transmitted infections we got that we done we are going we are done with that okay are being sexually transmitted infections are being uh, transmitted by all these three lymph nodes we are okay with that but uh, there comes the cellulitis the cellulitis on the medial side of the body on the medial side of the foot and the leg is being transmitted by the superficial inguinal lymph node where my cursor is okay superficial inguinal lymph node are the one that drain the cellulitis on the medial side of the body but the popliteal or the poplet the popliteal which are the lymph nodes just here above your knee just around your knee okay these are the lymph nodes which drain the cellulitis on the lateral side of the foot or leg you got my point right now did you get my point did you catch me just tell me just tell me that where 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 yeah yeah you should yeah that, that means that means whenever cellulitis happens on this side of the body that with this that this will go this will go towards the this area, this will go to go towards this region okay this will go towards these lymph nodes but whenever cellulitis happens here on the medial side of the body this will go upwards this will go upwards to this lymph node which is actually superficial inguinal lymph node okay so two can so i just told you two confusing things i will write here for you for your simplicity okay I, yeah i will write here because it is a thing uh, which is we where we get actually confused para aortic that means testes okay but when ever it when it comes to scrotum it is being drained by it is being drained by superficial inguinal lymph nodes superficial inguinal lymph nodes are draining are draining scrotum which is actually pouch of testes okay one organ it is it is a one scrotum and testes are just one organ but their lymphatic drainage is dif different so when cancer skin cancer of scrotum is occurring this will transmit towards the uh, superficial inguinal load, nodes but when ca cancer of testes is occurring this will transmit towards the paraaortic lymph nodes okay so adding this uh, adding this with this that superficial inguinal are the ones of the those which actually medial which are actually draining the medial foot or but okay i'm just writing the medial cellulitis okay for simple city and the popliteal are those popliteal are those which are draining what tell me tell me which are draining which are draining Let, lateral cellulitis yeah popliteal lateral cellulitis so we have got a mnemonic here we have got a mnemonic here just pronounce popliteal as pop lateral can you see the my cursor here okay you got my point popliteal pop lateral just forget what popliteal is just pronounce pron pronounce is pop lateral the just give me a second my screen is visible to you just give me a second
right now can you see my screen can you see my screen right now okay just see this popliteal means pop lateral okay popliteal means pop lateral that means popliteal lymph nodes drain are being drained by the dorsolateral foot or the posterior calf okay you have to remember you have to memorize this that popliteal are the lymph nodes which drain the dorsolateral side of the foot and the posterior calf and you already know lateral side means the outer side and medial side means the inner side of the body and write this on your uh, okay let me send you this via whatsapp come on because this is the important thing and you have to memorize it i am sending you on whatsapp okay write this down on your write this down on your book or whenever you get free or rememberize this thing okay Mem yeah mem memorize this thing that this is the important thing which will be encountered in different bcqs so now uh, there is one point left in the in this okay yeah this is good yeah okay now there is a single point which i want to mention or which i want to discuss make your brain refreshed because this is the most important point which i am going to tell you right now okay see come here can you see my screen okay okay see this is the region is this region is the right side of the body okay just let me clear the screen okay this is the right side of the body okay and this is the left side of the body can you see the first aid writer or the first aid which is who has written this first aid or who has drawn this image has made this area dark okay has made this area dark why he has made this area dark because he wants to tell you that on the right side which is the dark area it is being all these lymph nodes on the right side drain into a lymphatic duct which is named it as a right lymphatic duct can you see my cursor right now can you see my cursor here okay you i see it now this is the dark area okay this is being supplied by the right lymphatic duct can you see here right lymphatic duct the book says right lymphatic duct drains the right side of your body above the diaphragm into the junction of the right subclavian and the internal jugular vein okay can you read this for me just read it for me okay i want you to read this because this is the most important point mm -hmm. go on go on uh, uh, yeah okay read this too okay so so see see now this just tell me when image uh, gets clear on your screen okay am i clear to you on the screen okay okay just give me a sec now 
its back okay see this this dark area all the lymph nodes in this dark area on the right side above the diaphragm are getting drained into a duct which is named as right lymphatic duct and that right lymphatic duct will eventually drain into the junction of the internal jugular vein right inter right subclavian vein and internal jugular vein okay let me show you a picture Can you see this picture? Am I visible to you on the screen? Okay. See this. This. Uh, uh, this. Yeah. 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 See this. This is this green is this yes this green. This is this green is actually lymphatic duct, which is right lymphatic duct. Okay. all the areas on the right side of the body are go going to be drained by this right thoracic duct into the junction of the right internal jugular vein and the right subclavian vein are you getting my point hello are you there see 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 okay yeah yeah actually i think this that, that there is a, a little bit of weather problem because it is a rainy season right now here that's why it yeah yeah but it would it will be clear in some hours i think on yeah okay that is good okay then comes the left thoracic duct the left thoracic duct is being drained into this region which is actually the junction of right uh, left internal jugular vein and the left subclavian vein so right side of the, of the body you just have to remember this thing that right side of the body above the diaphragm is being drained by the right lymphatic duct and all the body on the left side and all the body on the below the diaphragm is being drained by this all this region which is actually light gray color is being drained by the thoracic duct okay you got my point just tell me what did i tell you about the right lymphatic duct and the thoracic duct duct yes yes above the diaphragm and where the thoracic and, and tell me about thoracic duct and and other side of the body is drained by what ha what happens if the thoracic duct is broken chylothorax chylothorax chyle will accumulate because because see 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 i want to tell these are the bcq points okay i want to i want to emphasize i actually want to emphasize on this point that this chylothorax thing is very important keep in mind that whenever right thoracic duct is ruptured okay rupture of thoracic duct rupture of thoracic duct can cause chylothorax because chyle is a fluid which which actually which is actually formed in the gastric region okay chyle is the in the ileum region of the gastric stomach in the ileum region of the of the intestine the lipids the lipids are actually getting 
and then our lipids actually travel into the lymph node lymph vessels okay lipids in the ileum in the ileal region travel towards the lymphatic duct that's why it appears as as very cream colored because of the lipids and whenever there is any kind of break in thoracic thoracic duct because this region is being drained by the thoracic duct if any rupture for suppose here is occurring the thorax will be uh, will, will thorax will contain the fluid which is very creamy in color that's why it is called as a chylothorax you got my point not exactly chylo the chylothorax point okay see for suppose this is intestine what is this intestine this is duodenum this is jejunum this is ileum okay you know from ileum the absorption of the materials occur into the blood this is the blood for suppose okay you got you are getting my point but the lipids the lipids and from the blood from the blood these go towards the liver and this is called as the portal system from where they, where they, where do they go towards the liver okay l for the liver okay but and this is called the first pass metabolism understand this because i am not just telling not uh, just teaching you the immunology module i am teaching you things from different modules too this is the thing of gastrointestinal system okay this is the thing of gastrointestinal system because right now this is countering i i just want to tell you whenever any kind of material in the ileum region is being absorbed into the blood they go to the liver there they get metabolized there they go get destroyed okay there they got filtered in the liver and this is called as the, and then they go towards the heart for the pumping towards the all over the body you got my point and this this whole thing is called as the first pass metabolism that means whenever the one thing is being absorbed into the blood that thing should be filtered by the first pass metabolism but the pets which are actually the lipids don't get absorbed into the blood they get absorbed into another thing what is that thing do you know about that that is the lymphatic vessels that is the l small for the lymphatic vesicles vessels okay you are getting my point right now from this lymphatic from this lymphatic from this uh, they, they go towards the lymphatic duct lymphatic uh, vessels and from those lymphatic vessels they go towards the lymph nodes from the lymph nodes they go towards the thoracic duct okay now this is the thoracic duct for suppose okay the lipids the lipids inside your body inside your ileum doesn't get absorbed does not get absorbed into the blood but they instead they get absorbed into the lymph vessels and from the lymph vessels they go towards the thoracic duct which is actually duct which is actually the duct is, which is draining the whole this light gray area of the body especially the thorax region whenever any kind of break occur in this region any kind of break for suppose this is the break okay this cross is the break this cross is the symbol for break you got my point for suppose any kind of break occurs in this region all the fluid present in this thorax cavity in this vessel will come outside into the thorax region okay and that fluid is creamy in nature because of the lipids present in it okay and that creamy fluid will cause accumulation of fluid into the thorax and will compress the lungs are you getting my point these lipid this lipidy fluid this lipidy fluid which normally has to go normally has to go from the thoracic duct into the junction of the internal jugular vein and the junction of the internal jugular vein and the subclavian okay you are getting my point no see normally this fluid has from the thoracic duct will drain where it will drain from the thoracic duct where where fluid will go into the jugular vein and into the subclavian vein from that subclavian and jugular vein they will go towards the inferior vena cava and from inferior vena cava they give, will they will go towards the heart okay should i should i draw that okay you 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 got my point okay from heart it will it from heart it will again go towards the whole body so the lipids actually 
surpassed liquid lipids actually bypassed this whole first pass metabolism they gone to the heart they went to the heart via in other via, via in other uh, system which is the lymphatic system for suppose they go gone through this way okay now you get my point for suppose i i got a break in this thoracic duct all the fluid will get out into the thor thoracic region and this fluid will compress your heart will compress your lungs will compress your so a media external region will compress L any of your region in your thorax because normally your thorax doesn't contain the fluid okay and that abnormality is called as the chylothorax yeah can you can you read this for me this point i have written here read this for me mm hmm mm hmm and that and that and i have uh, let me let me write something more for you and in chest cavity chest cavity it leads to and chest cavity fluid leads to compression of compression of lungs and heart and heart which is actually an abnormality okay so now i think you will get my point read this see i have i am going to explain i am going going to explain this once again in just a rapid manner okay understand this this is your ilium just respond me with okay okay i will uh, be uh, satisfied with that okay first of all this is ilium all right in the ilium many substances get absorbed this is ilium first of all this is ilium region this region can you see this region okay this this is ileum region mm -hmm. okay just give me a minute okay just give me a minute i am going to correct my internet just give me hello okay can you okay just just give me a minute okay now can you see my screen okay can you see these blue lines yeah yeah okay first of all this is duodenum this this this, this part
can you see uh, can you see my cursor okay yeah the actually uh, it's a rainy it's just because of the weather condition the net isn't working very well but i hope it will, it will i have i've just my kept my phone outside my room right now i hope it would be better right now okay okay see this is jordanum this is jejunum this is ilium suppose okay from this ilium region things get absorbed into the blood okay from this ilium region things get absorbed into the blood from the blood they go towards the liver okay are you getting my point from the liver they go towards the heart in the liver these all these material which is absorbed from the ilium gets filtrated and gets metabolized okay but there are some substances which do not go towards the blood and those are the lipids those are the fats okay these fats these fats go towards the these fats are the actually lipids l for lipids okay these go these uh, lipids go towards the lymphatic channels these are the lymphatic channels which are actually present inside your ileum because along with blood there are your uh, there are your lymphatic channels too these all these lymphatic channels meet one another and form the thoracic duct and this thoracic duct actually drains into the junction of left and right right uh, uh, right and sorry this thoracic duct actually drains into the junction of internal jugular vein and the subclavian vein okay from that from that, that junction they go towards the inferior vena cava and from inferior vena cava it go towards the right atrium of the heart okay you got my point right now and this thoracic duct just lies in your thorax or suppose it gets ruptured because of any cause any because of any trauma okay and with that because of that rupture all the fluid will come in the thorax and will compress your heart and your lungs and that condition is called as chylothorax okay no. yeah now you got my point now read this now read this thing chylothorax yeah see when your lungs are being compressed or your heart is being compressed they will not function properly because they those have these both organs have pumping mechanism they both expand and contract expand and contract expand and contract if you are uh, compressing a balloon if you are compressing a balloon then the the expansibility of the balloon will get disturbed and the person will not uh, will not respire properly will not get its blood into its organ properly that's why the chylothorax is a serious problem i hope you got this whole scenario if any yeah if okay i will give you some questions right now we will attempt some questions but before that i want to read this in front of you okay can you see this note okay okay, okay. just maximize it because i cannot maximize it right now okay Re uh, uh, i am going going to read this this is actually not related to uh, this this module but because this is from embos this is very important uh, thing so i want to mention it don't try to understand it just get a view from these points okay in embos i just got a point that yeah the the azygous vein receives blood from the right intercostal vein which in turn receive blood from the right breast the azygous vein has numerous anastomoses with the vertebral venous plexus which is a longitudinal network of valveless veins in the spine that include paravertebral plexus of batson 
the lake of valves in this network facilitates the spread of tumors and infection spinal metastasis from the breast cancer most commonly develop in the thoracic vertebrae metastasis to the bone are most commonly result from the hematogenous spread right now uh, this is not the thing which is related to uh, uh, immunology but i will tell you i will tell you about, about this later i am just sending you in a whatsapp message message to you okay i will tell you i will make an audio for it or i will explain this things when ever later okay just leave this this is this is important but this is not important as regards of the immunology section okay i am just sending you in your whatsapp i will i will mention i will explain this uh, afterwards so now drainage of lymphatic system which was a very important topic we have almost covered it now we have to attempt some questions relating to it This is a question which is actually again not related to the immunology section but I want you to attempt this question because you are an USML if you are an S USML aspirant you must have knowledge about everything okay so go on I, I am not expecting the right answer from you for this question but I want you to attempt this question right now okay attempt this hmm. why why give me the reason mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. Come, come. We are going to attempt it together. Okay, see. You, you got a patient who is 64 year old male. First thing you have to, you have to keep in mind your patient is very old. Comes to the emergency department because of a two days history of difficulty walking and extreme pains. Around his right ankle that begins just suddenly. Okay, that means he got a pain and he got extreme pain and got extreme ankle uh, difficulty in walking that just begins suddenly you have to keep in mind that because he has he has not any kind of chronic history that why it is that's why it is not going to be any kind of autoimmune disease or any kind of chronic disease it is just a reaction okay it is just a reaction from anything he was recently treated for gastroenteritis okay he was recently treated for recently treated for gastroenteritis that means gi infection following a trip to Mexico on examination he is unable to plantar flex his right foot okay unable to plantar flex his right foot this is an important thing and a large soft muscular mass on the proximal portion of the calf is, is palpated the tenderness with the palpation there is tenderness that means pain with the palpation and movement okay so that means which of the following medication most likely causes the patient's current condition that means I got a patient in emergency and I treated him for the gastroenteritis and the drug I gave him caused him a side effect okay do you do you get that the point that is the actual scenario that is the actual scenario now now I have to see 
which antibiotic could be given for the gastroenteritis penicillin g this is not an antibiotic for the gastroenteritis okay penicillin is very obsolete antibiotic nowadays and it is given for the syphilis or in or other it is given for the other respiratory tract infections not for the gi infection so i am going to cancel this then comes the then comes the amoxicillin which is also given for the broad spectrum respiratory tract infections i am going to cancel this ceftriaxone ceftriaxone is very war, uh, very broad spectrum antibiotic this could be given for the gastroenteritis but i am keeping this option as a, i am keeping this as an option okay erythromycin is again uh, an antibiotic which is given for the respiratory tract infections okay so i am cancelling this option to metronidazole which is actually flagel in market it is also given for the gastroenteritis so i have got i have got three options here i have to see which of among from these three options which is the drug which can cause these symptoms okay metronidazole the adverse effects of the metronidazole which i remember right now are the metallic taste of the tongue and and other uh, and there are no any kind of other uh, in, in the uh, other kind of adverse effects for metronidazole because metronidazole is the one of the safer drugs okay metronidazole doesn't contain any kind of other side, uh, side effects it ju it just causes a metallic taste and on your tongue okay you are getting my point so now again i am left with the two options ceftriaxone and ciprofloxacin see ceftriaxone is given for broad spectrum infections okay when there are so many infection in your body like a respiratory tract infection uh, or you have got uh, gastrointestinal infection at the same time you have got different infection you have got cellulitis these are the wide spectrum antibiotics that and these are given for the wide spectrum diseases okay so i will once again cancel but my patient has just got the gastroenteritis he doesn't have different infections he just only has one infection that's why i am cancelling this and i am going to attempt the ciprofloxacin so now i have to see the adverse effects of the ciprofloxacin the ciprofloxacin has an adverse effect which is named as achilles tendonitis do you, do you know achilles tendonitis which is actually the pain achilles tendonitis means the pain in the tendon in which in which you cannot plantar flex your right foot that means you cannot uh, like we break on the car we put break in the car we put a uh, race accelerator in the car this is the plantar flexion now that is the plantar flexion of our foot we cannot do that we are unable to do that and that is just because of the ciprofloxacin and that's your correct answer okay so if i was not i was i was not able to remember the side effects of the different different diseases just a minute just a minute i think there is a connection problem okay okay uh, can you listen me uh, you can listen me okay see for suppose i had i did not remember that achilles tendonitis yeah yeah okay for suppose i did not remember that uh, achilles tendonitis is the adverse effect of the ciprofloxacin but by excluding the other options i can attempt ciprofloxacin because ciprofloxacin is the most recurrently used drug for the gastroenteritis okay okay i i hope uh, it is retrieving the question so what is like so we uh, uh, as soon as it gets on its page let's discuss the achilles tendonitis okay what is achilles tendonitis okay can you see the question right now it's back okay see ciprofloxacin that's correct achilles tendonitis results most mostly from the sports injuries in the runners and jumpers fluoropin but a 64 year old male could not be a runner or jumper okay that's a common sense okay so the flor so the fluoroquinolone such as ciprofloxacin are a rare cause of achilles tendonitis okay the most the patients 
report the patient report of acute tenderness that means pain soft pain that means pain on the touch tenderness means pain on the touch around the right ankle and the presence of a large soft muscular mass on the proximal portion of his right calf are the most consistent with the ruptured achilles tendon tendon okay these are the symptoms of ruptured achilles tendon and we, we have to remember these things because if you have got this this definition uh, if you got these words buzz words in your mind that these are these belong to achilles tendonitis you can easily pick these to prophylaxis or you just remember that get that for alone for lone gastroenteritis we commonly use the prophylaxis as a drug and from that drug we can suspect that the disease could be the adverse effect of those drug okay there are two two ways to attempt the same question one is that for which for this disease which antibiotic is going to be used and another one is this what is the this adverse effect is it for is acute tendonitis and it belongs to which drug okay so this so further moving on this patient's report this patient's report of acute tenderness around the right ankle and the presence of a large soft muscular mass on the proximal portion of his right calf are the most consistent with a ruptured achilles tendon which can occur as a result of achilles tendonitis that means infection or inflammation sorry and that means inflammation of achilles achilles tendon okay achilles tendonitis is usually due to sports injury most commonly from sprinting and jumping long distance running is also a risk factor so further moving on read this disease risk factor okay i want you to read this because it will get uh, stuck in your mind by reading this hmm i have one thing here i have one one thing here to explain okay see the old uh, all these cases old, older patients than 60 years patients of renal disease patients of hemodialysis patients of renal transplantation patients of long term glucocorticoid use all these patients are suspected or suspect of immunosuppression these patients have weak immune system okay these patients have weak immune system because these are weak immune system there will be there will be easy inflammation or there will be easy uh, immune attack on the achilles tendon whenever you are using the ciprofloxacin that's why because it's uh, okay okay this is fluoroquinolone uh, sorry why did you yeah yeah because because pro actually is in the this is called risk over benefit or benefit over risk sometimes you risk your patients to get specific benefit because you don't want your patient to die soon okay what is most better what is what is more better a death or a simple tendon a simple tendonitis which could could be treated uh, treated after that so that is the thing which is kept by the doctors in their mind okay fluoroquinolone so you can see here fluoroquinolone induced tendonitis that means tendonitis itis means inflammation that means an inflammation which is induced by the side effect of a drug which is fluoroquinolone which is actually ciprofloxacin so you have to keep that thing in mind furthermore we have to keep we have to in in case of pharma 
remember one thing for pharmacology you have to remember name of the drug clinical use of the drug mechanism of action of the drug and adverse effect of the drug these four are the things which are you which should be remembered by you which should be memorized by you which should be crammed by you okay what are those four things name of the drug clin i said it clinical use of the drug mechanism of action how the does it, how the drug is working and the last thing is the adverse effect in your first aid you have got these all these four things of all, of all drugs in your first aid book okay you just have to memorize them because they will appear again and again in question see when you are a clinician when you are a practice when you are practicing at a clinic you have to be you have to keep in mind that what kind of drug is going to give what effect to your patient okay what kind of adverse effect will be uh, will happen in a patient with that drug okay give me a minute so moving ahead so moving ahead read this i want to read this the other choices are incorrect read this the other choices are incorrect because hmm okay so you have to keep in mind you so 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 here you have to keep in mind that amoxicillin has the adverse effect of hypersensitivity nausea vomiting diarrhea is almost uh, uh, adverse effect of almost every drug okay these are not a specific adverse effect you have to keep in mind that specific adverse effect of all the drugs because in the questions in the mcqs or in the clinical scenarios you will be asked about the important important things not the uh, rare random and rare things okay got my point okay so amoxicillin has adverse effect of hypersensitivity okay go on Yes, 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 yes. You got my point right. You my point got my point. Hmm. Okay so can you can you te Hmm Hmm. Yeah, seems to be. Yeah, yeah, seems to be like a common one. Okay. But still, still, hypersensitivity for amoxicillin 
No, I, I am saying that it is common, no doubt, hypersensitivity is very common, but still, still it has to be remembered for the amoxicillin specifically. No, no, I'm not asking you a question. I'm just, uh, I'm just telling you that keep in mind that uh, adverse effects of amoxicillin are hypersensitivity, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, NVD. NVD, okay, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, NVD. Okay, and for ceftriaxone, which are the adverse effects? For, for ceftriaxone? For ceftriaxone, hmm. Hmm. see, let me tell me, let me. Okay, now let me tell you one thing more. Okay, see. You, what you are, what you were treating in your patient, gastrointestinal disease. What you are treating in your patient, gastrointestinal disease. Okay. So, all those drugs, whose side, whose side effect is diarrhea, should be, should that be given to the patient? No, although see, if amoxicillin is causing diarrhea, so should I, should I, may I give the, this, this drug to a patient with gastrointestinal disease? No, you, I cannot give that because gastrointestinal disease itself means the diarrhea and vomiting. Yeah, so it could be constipation, gastrointestinal disease, it could be constipation, it could be diarrhea, it could be any kind of vomiting, okay? So amoxicillin itself causes the diarrhea so i cannot give that to the patient with gastroenteritis again again the sephra again this kind this this uh, erythromycin okay erythromycin also causes gastrointestinal irritation so i cannot give the, this this also to the patient again the penicillin g also causes the diarrhea i cannot give that vancomycin causes diarrhea i cannot again give that to the patient okay if you have got these things in your mind, you can pick the question very fast. Okay, so I can do a one do one thing that amoxicillin. I can do one thing that I will command C and send you in a WhatsApp text. You can just get over these things whenever you are free. one thing it, it takes time it is taking time just take a screenshot of this this para yeah take a screenshot and and do remember do remember yeah do remember these things Yeah, I moved it. I am sending you. I just, um, just give me a minute. Done. Okay. Okay. I have sent you this. Okay. Go on. Okay. Okay. And one thing more. And yeah, I sent it. Okay. One because I will uh, myself remember these things because these things are very uh, kind of uh, volatile things. See, you have to keep this thing in mind that metronidazole also causes optic nerve damage. 
this is one of the high yield things which I want to uh, emphasize on okay okay do you do you know anything about disulfum like reaction should I explain this or you know it uh, or you know it already mm hmm okay see all those people who are yeah yeah all those people who are very alcoholic in nature okay who use alcohol on daily basis what we do to them is we provide them some medication in which they can those medications contain aldehyde okay uh, what aldehyde does aldehyde aldehyde causes the aldehyde binds to the ethanol and whenever the patient uses the alcohol the aldehyde binds to the ethanol and it causes a headache to the patient to the vomiting to the patient nausea like feeling to the patient flushing and a hypotension tachycardia like patient is patient gets very discomfort whenever he drinks alcohol after taking the aldehyde medicine and that reaction is called as disulfum like reaction okay do you get my point kind of like yeah disulfum is a kind of disulfum is like see read this okay read this you will get more uh, kind of clear concept from this okay This is the most important thing which I wanted to tell you earlier. Okay, disulfum, disulfum, disulfum. I will uh, you, I will read from here. Disulfum is an oral drug that is actually an aldehyde drug. Okay, disulfum. What is disulfum? Disulfum is an aldehyde drug that is used for treating the alcoholism. Because whenever you will, when for suppose you are an you are an alcoholic patient, you want to leave alcohol, but you cannot leave. Okay. You you have an you have a habit of uh, drinking alcohol uh, again and again. So what I will do with you, I will give give you a medicine which contains aldehyde. Whenever you will in, you will make an intake of alcohol, you will drink alcohol, you will take alcohol. Then aldehyde will react to that alcohol and that will cause unpleasant symptoms. So for the future for the future you will not take alcohol at any cost. Okay that is called the disulfum like reaction that is also the adverse effect of metronidazole that means whenever you are taking a metronidazole and you and you also took alcohol so what will happen that there disulfum like reaction will happen and you will get dizziness you will get hypotension you will get flushing you will get a kind of headache and you will like you will be like why god why i just took that alcohol okay you got my point furthermore in a yeah furthermore you have to keep in mind that optic nerve damage also occurs as an adverse effect of metronidazole okay optic nerve damage also occurs as an adverse effect of metronidazole you have to keep in mind that thing the, this is I think this is one of this is this is uh, this includes I think almost two topics because like you can see here okay these are the fluoroquinolones from the first aid lymphatic drainage okay so we have now move towards the next question if you want to take a break I can uh, go with that too if you want to continue I can go with that too I am okay with both the things yeah just yeah because yeah yeah yeah, yeah okay uh, that's why I asked you if you are like tired if you are yeah yeah, yeah I, I, I can understand that that's why I, I just asked you if you want a break of 10 to 15 minutes or 20 minutes I can come back again because I am free today uh, if you want me to do that tomorrow I can do that too it's upon you now you tell me what I have to do right now yeah 
I can go with that. Hmm. I I am okay with that. I am okay with that. I am okay with that. If you if you if if you want me if you want me to do all the questions rapidly in just five, uh, ten fi minutes or five minutes, I can do that too. If you want me to do it tomorrow, we will do it tomorrow. Okay, okay, okay. That's okay. That's totally fine. Hmm. I have U World, but uh, I have offline U World. I don't have the actual account. Like, uh, like, like. Uh, this is this this is U World. Yeah, this is you. This. I think this is 2021, and uh, 20. That is n that is this. Yeah, there is no uh, there is not such big difference between the 2021 and 2023. I will buy U World in the last some months. Of my exam, or uh, I will borrow it from some friend. But right now, I right now I I I am going with this offline session, and I have another option too. Like if we are if we if we are if we are we're done with uh, this this uh, first aid thing, we can. I actually my when I used to study, I used a pattern. See, for suppose uh, this is a U word. For suppose this is a question. Okay. First question. First of all, this is the question. What I did that I I just used to attempt this question. Okay, I attempted this question. First of all, I went wrong. There is no problem. What I will do? I will I will read this whole uh, explanation. Okay, I will understand this explanation. First, I got the explanation. Then I will this I will see. Which topic is this? This is the allergy and immunology topic, NGO edema topic. What I will do right now? I will go towards the first aid. Okay, I will go towards the first aid 2023 edition. I will search here NGO edema. Okay. So now, wherever I am, I will I find NGO edema. For suppose I found injury in my hair, I will read these these lines. I will I will get understanding of these lines, and then I will go towards another topic. Right here, injury in my also written. I will do that too. I will do this way. Like I will do a topic. I will do first a question, then I will read the topic. So so I usually used to do this. I can uh, do that for you too. If you want me, I can do. I can give you a demo for that too. Like we will do a question first. Then we then we will read the topic. Yeah, that will work because uh, in in that case you are going you are going to be done with your U world too. Yeah, other other otherwise you you will have to pick uh, you will have to spend more time on the U world. Yeah. 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 I. I okay. Hmm. Yeah, and and first aid too. Okay, I will do I will do it for you tomorrow. First, we will attempt these questions from the lymphatic drainage section section. These these four questions, and then we will go towards the U word side. All right, all right. Hmm. Yeah, I have record. Yeah, I have recorded this. 